item is additions or adjustments. Are there any from Tom or the board? I have a couple. Yeah, um, I'd like to add a discussion item about uh, potential river channel management, yep. um, better known as dredging. I believe is that, that is coming to the meeting. Up? And he's going to also discuss a grant opportunity for uh, He'll word this much better than I do. Uh, like graphical design displays. Um, he said there's no town match that could be used for generating renderings of like buyout properties or something. If oh. the board wants to pursue it, I I believe he's looking for a if we want to pursue or not and uh, delegation if we do. But Seth will do a presenting on that. Um. And then there is a another executive okay, session to ready? add to no, the I have a two one time recognition. Okay. And you would like us to approve those? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anything else, Rosemary? Nothing that's not on the agenda. All right. Okay. All right. So, so we could I add a couple? Well, sure. Yeah. Um, you have channel mitigation. You have Seth Jensen for the grant. Yeah. You have um, executive session for ongoing. Yeah. And then a uh, quick update on the skate park and the half pipe. There are two. Um, you can just do that quickly right now. Okay. Uh, so the half pipe's under construction. It's concrete's going to be poured Thursday or Friday this week, and it will be complete and ready for skate camp on August 12th. Very excited. Beautiful. Um, I have... and then... Oop, go ahead. One quick uh, correction to the agenda under consent items. Adrian Smith is spelled wrong. It should be A D R I A N, not A D R E N. Okay. And uh, two bio applications. Um, that came in one for Wallace and one for Tetro. Um, 297 River Road West and the Health Center. All right. Is that all? And that deadline is August 12th. It was extended to August 30th. Okay. Uh, next item. Yeah, but I've got. I've got one that's that could be a question, and I'm not sure if it's a question or an addition. So I received, and I'm not quite sure why I received an email from Doug Farnham regarding um, local economic in impact payments. And I forwarded that to Tom. So the question for Tom is, is this something that you are aware of? And it looks like select board approval is required. To receive these payments, did you get the email and or is it something we need to act on? Rosemary just printed that out for me, uh, Barnum. And I, to be honest, I haven't looked at it today. Uh, so I, I, I'm, un, I'm unaware with the, the details of it. Yeah, I got the right. same. It looked, it looked like there was a form. I, it can probably wait until our next meeting, but let's highlight that as an agenda item for next meeting. Is that all you had for additions or adjustments, Duncan? That is. 
Okay. Uh, Rosemary, do you have invoices and orders being passed around? Okay. Uh, item number three is public comment. Is there any? Um, just an interest in knowing when the municipal plan select board review is going to happen in reality. I believe I'm going to have to get in touch with Paul about that. Um, I have your email, so I could let you know. But I'm assuming the planning commission will send out an agenda. It was yeah. posted on the town website and on the board outside. And I'm going to there appears to be a miscommunication between the expectation of the planning commission and the select board. Uh, it's all, all the select board members and myself were unaware of this. So, yeah, I agree. Thank you for that. Can, can I? Uh, yeah, this is Paul. I was having a hard time hearing that conversation. Could you repeat that? Tom? It's just, there appears to be a miscommunication. And, and as, here you have the entire select board and myself were uh, either unaware or and or we dropped the ball. I mean, I don't think it matters. What matters is moving forward to the next step. But it's clear that five members of the board weren't weren't ready and weren't here. And there were two members of the planning commission. So we have to regroup and just figure out the next steps. Yeah, and Paul, I'll, I'll own my piece and I vaguely remember hearing about this meeting and I, it did just slip my mind. So I apologize for that. And well, I think it's, it's gonna to have to be warned again, it's another 30 day period. So it puts a pretty substantial setback time-wise. Paul or Megan, maybe you can confirm, does the select board have to have one or two public hearings on the plan? So two, so this was going to be your first public hearing on the uh, proposed municipal plan adoption. Um, so in the plan expires, I think it's like September 19th. So we are, we were in a tight timeline. Um, you know, I coordinated with Tom to warn the hearing, but I recognize that was the same day that you guys were moving stuff around the office. Um, so we did send it out to the psych board and the legislative body, and we did like warn it properly for tonight at six. Um, but maybe next time the reminder might be helpful. So, so your next meeting, I mean, I guess Tom and I can coordinate, but really now it's going to be like a month behind schedule because you have to hold the two hearings on the proposed plan. So you'll want to hold. Then you know, I guess rewarn the for the first uh, public hearing essentially for the select board at you know your next meeting as long as we can warn it like you know thirty days out. T technically, it has to be warned just fifteen days out, but we you know we get the copy of the plan to the select board thirty days out. Yeah. And I suppose you've already gotten that technically. You've already actually received the copy of the plan like 30 days ago, so. And uh, Megan, are there any major consequences for us, um, you know, letting it expire before we have a new plan approved? Um, I mean, the, the interim consequence, I would say, is just it, you know, you lose um, your eligibility for certain grants, you know, like municipal planning grants and, you know, other grants from the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Or, yeah, so so basically grant eligibility in the interim, um, then you lose your planning confirmation temporarily. So I would just encourage you, you know, let's let's just rewarn your first public hearing since it obviously didn't officially happen and have it at your next meeting. You know, and then you'll have one more after that. Are there any anticipated grants between now and the first meeting in September? <laughs> No, I, I do know that the municipal planning grants this year are actually going to come out later. So that'll work to, um, you know, your advantage. Um, usually they're due like October, November timeframe, but I think they're going to be a little bit later this year. So not that I'm aware of. If the plan expires, it, 
will not be used in an Act 250 proceeding as a as an approved plan. Also, is that correct? Yeah, because like your your plan would lapse uh, for a little while, you know. So so I ideally you don't have too much of a elapsed time. I mean, in an ideal world, it would be adopted, you know, readopted before it's expired. But um, yeah, so if you don't have, if you don't have like a current plan in place, then, you know, they don't have a, you don't have the standing, I guess, We're in that the, sense. Okay. Well, huh? It, it, we're not eligible for certain grants and you know in an act 250 hearing like it's not going to count as a town plan so um not great but not the end of the world probably we just need to make sure it happens as quickly as possible right thank you all yeah right. i think i think a reminder email to all of us <laughs> would be really good and appropriate I don't, I don't care who does it whether it's you megan or or tom but yeah <laughs> It's it's honestly a little embarrassing that we, this this was a published hearing and we didn't make it. But my apologies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll connect with Tom then to read read more on it um, and see when your next meeting is. Okay. Well, the next meeting has to be thirty days from now, so it is yeah. the next meeting. It's 14 days. Though. It would be September 2nd or September 9th. It depends on the board wants to hold it on Labor Day or not. You should probably make that decision tonight. Probably make it the night. September 2nd is not 30 days. They only need 15 days. The board needs 30 days to receive the plan. And they've already received it. So we could hold a, we could even hold a special hearing on another day. Probably a special hearing would be better. Maybe we can just send an email out. In the morning, the board could all say they're available X days and when they meet the forum of the board together. We'll move forward. Okay. Uh, item number four select board issues and concerns. Are there any? Uh, yeah. Um, so I have an announcement to make. Uh, it is with very mixed emotions uh, that I have to say that. Uh, on October 1st, my wife and I will be moving to Underhill. Uh, so we will no longer be residents of Johnson at that time. Um, this decision is not an easy one for us. Uh, this town is where we met and fell in love and where I've spent, uh, you know, a third of my life at this point. Um, and so, you know, leaving here is, is very difficult for both of us. Um, we have a lot of, a lot of great memories here. Um, enjoying all the beautiful parts of Johnson, all the beautiful people here. Um, I'm very much going to miss all of that and all of you. Um, the reality for us is that when the time came for us to look at our housing situation uh, and think about re-signing our lease, it was going to cost a lot more to re-sign the lease uh, than it was worth in our eyes. And we were able to find a place that, that fit our needs in Underhill. Um, and so you know, October 1st, I will no longer be a resident here. Um, so I just wanted to announce that and say that as of that date, I will have to resign my position on the select board. Um, I hope that we can use the time in between now and then to try to find people who are interested in doing this work, um, put the word out and, and get good people for the job. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. Okay. Did you say October 1st, Shane? October 1st, yep. I think we should get him a cake and a card. Select board members don't get cards. <laughs> it's the only committee. He didn't say no to the cake, though, so that's... <laughs> get booted off the select board. Right. Most of the time, they don't get elected sets. <laughs> ju just, just for clarity's purpose, Tom, perhaps you're the right one to ask this question too. I think I know the answer, but um, I believe that the select board has the ability to make an appointment to fill the period of time that the person is leaving until the next election. Well, Do I have good. that right? That's correct. So the first meeting in October uh, would be the time to appoint. So I think the select board should start 
actively seeking interested parties and noticing the vacancy um, as soon as possible. So that way at that first meeting in October, uh, the seat could be filled until town meeting in 2025. And, and, and also just not that I'm recommending this, but another option for the board would be to accept the resignation and not fill the appointment and, and let someone run uh, for the open for the open seat because Shane's position is would be normally open this March anyway. Am I right on that, Shane? Yes, you are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other issues or concerns? None out there. Thank you, Shane, for your service. Thank you, Shane. We're throwing a huge party. It's been an honor. It's going to be mean, epic. There'll be 20 people in here. Yeah. No, and, and <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, I'm, I, I, <laughs> I should have mentioned, and I, I will mention now that uh, if it hadn't been for Beth first and now Eben in this position, uh, the last couple of years would have been a lot more difficult, I think, for all of us. Um, and just knowing that both of these two were only a phone call or a text away anytime I had any questions. Uh, it certainly helped me get through some very difficult times. So thank you, Evan. Thank you. Our next item is consent agenda. Um, there was an amendment to it by Tom, but are there any other amendments by any board members? Yes. Is it? And, and I, I only say this because um, I was approached by a member of the public that when we do this consent that there should be enough information in the consent motion or the agenda to be crystal clear about what it is that we're approving so i just i would like to request that the minutes reflect an actual copy of our amended resolution for the bond vote as well as a copy of the amended warning for the special town meeting. And also to note that the amendment for the warning um, uh, puts the warning in the active voice and it modifies the, um, the amount, the bonded amount from 420,000 to 590,000. So with those, with those things, I'm fine with accepting the consent agenda. Are you good with that, Donna? Uh, so you were cutting out there for a minute, Duncan. Uh, you, you just want a copy of the amended resolution and notes about what is different about it? Was there anything else? Uh, yes, in an in a actual copy of the, of the warning, the public warning as well, be reflected in the minutes verbatim. Okay. you can get that from Tom if need be. Okay. With um, that, I would make I make a motion to uh, adopt those items as uh, as a consent agenda item number five. Motion on the floor, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Okay. Rosemary, the floor is yours. You had added two. So uh, the one motion sounded like it was really just to add that item to the consent agenda. Was it to add it and approve the whole consent agenda? I believe he said he wanted that information added to it. Yeah, so that would be yeah. yeah. In his motion, it sounded like he was just moving to add the thing, but you could have signed that one on the back in that packet right there. Yeah, yeah. As that a, big packet. You could say as amended by Duncan. Okay. In the last two pages. Opposed, Mary? Well, we can. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 
Hey, Rosemary, would you like to speak to these one time liquor licenses? Yeah. One is for, this is a limited event, a one time occasion, and for backcountry hunters and anglers. It is Derek um, Wilson, the one who submitted the application. It's to be held at the Woolen Mill on August. Can we get Rosemary near a microphone? I can't hear her at all. It's for August 31st, starting at. Eighteen hundred hours and ending at twenty one fifteen, so six to what, eleven o'clock. Eighteen nine nine fifteen. Yeah. And this was a catering permit. This is a one time event, a limited event, a one time occasion for the backcountry hunters and anglers at the woolen mill. Go to approve. Second. Motion a second for the discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The ayes have it. What's the other one? And the other one is for the Vermont Studio Center for um, a one time occasion for an art gallery, which is on August 9th. Yeah. And I'll move to approve that one. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Most opposed? Any yeah, ayes have it? Do you have anything else in your report, Rosemary? I passed out a budget status report. I'm not quite ready for the year end stuff. We had many, many grants that either nothing was spent or very little was spent, and I want to make sure that it's all correct for you to the board. Many, many grants is good. Well, between FEMA and the Community Foundation grants, several others. Do you have a sense of like how much FEMA is possibly out there coming our way? I mean, are we trued up with them at all on our expenses from last July? You like the, we got all our insurance money. Has not paid anything. You have been approved for CRC. Have they, they've uh, paid the dumpster costs and stuff. They yeah. haven't paid us anything. So, Isn't so that we, crazy? So we have hundreds of thousands of dollars. That, am I correct that we have incurred as expenses? Well, we got our insurance money for the library in this building. But not for the dumpsters no. in the town and all the overtime and blah, blah, blah. Somewhere that's going to hit our bottom line, hopefully soon. It's going to be like that. Well, the good thing is the library hasn't spent their money yet. Still have that on hand. But okay. It's going to be out. That's true. They haven't spent it yet. Because that grant that was coming in in April is. Okay. With this lower going, we can't hear it. The gist of it is, is that FEMA has not given us a lot of money yet, and we're still waiting on it from last July's flood. Rosemary can tell you the exact amount. <laughs> so you'll have a more finite answer on the surplus. Yeah. But but, it's okay. Does the board have any other questions on the budget, budget status update? Just a, a comment on the FEMA stuff. Um, Rosemary, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but you're accounting for all of the FEMA expenses outside of our normal budget process, therefore outside of our normal um, process, the, the year-end accounting process. Is, is that right? Yes, I have a separate fund for FEMA expenses okay. for the flood for last year. And that doesn't show on this? It's 
towards the end of this last year. Yeah. Could we get a status report from Ron or Tom on where we might be on getting those FEMA payments? So most of our, all of our CAT A, which is the response, um, you know, the document, et cetera, has been, we've submitted for approval and um, it's under review by CRT, which is the cost recovery program. Uh, and it's not covering our cost, it's the government auditing to recover their costs. Um, and so that's, I think one invoice, one, is, one side has been obligated to be through CRC and approved. They're just waiting on payment. Another one I think is in CRC, a category B, which is the emergency measures and uh, the work that was done to put the building back. The municipal building was obligated. The emergency measures were also obligated uh, the insulation, current body. But um, the pieces that are left out are one of those cat A. Uh, there are two road projects for road east, and I can't remember the other one that, um, for whatever reason, seems to be hung up at CRC right now. And we keep reproducing the same documents. Um, and then the TA for the technical assistance, which is all the time uh, that Ron has put in, volunteers have put in. Um, and myself put in will come back. So after they obligate all the funds, then the last thing is we put in for um, the technical assistance portion is that we're reimbursed for that. But that hasn't we haven't started even accounting for that. Other than that. But yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, believe it or not. So uh, we have some extra for the people. Yeah. Yeah. We're about fifty thousand in the hole. Sure. Uh, not that all things considered could be worse. I mean, we have put the that I mean, positive is the insurance for this building, uh, the loss of the contents has paid to put the building back, but it didn't cost us any more. We have a better setup, it's more efficient. We did not exceed the payment for those contents. So that's that's a plus, right? If you actually walk away, cash flow positive, I'm going to Yeah. Well, there's still a couple pieces of furniture we're going to get. Yeah. Filing cabinets. All right. Waterproof. Not interesting. Not yet. Hmm. Anything further, Rosemary? I don't think so. Gears and emissions is a separate thing, right? Yeah, it's a separate item, but you have. There was two sheets, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next is the road foreman report, uh, but there's a report in the packet. Um, two items. One is a plan purchase for a compactor, and the other is a culvert update, which is in the packet. Um, are there any questions on that? They are working on it right now, and maybe Tom has some answers. As far as the compactor goes, there was two late replies for the price of the compactor. Uh, one was $8,795 from Think Equipment, and the other was $6,000 from Johnson Hardware and Rental for a used compactor. That is all the information that I have on compactors. Uh, being that that's the first one, what would the board like to do about a compactor. You're I, talking about the small and compactor? The new one's not small, it's 700 pound for reverse. The old one that they have is it's small. A it's a plate compact. It's a large right. one. Yeah, but it's but, not what it's not one. No, 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 I'm talking about the ones around. that you can kind of push around with your hand. That's exactly. Now, what do we need a $8,000 compactor? I believe the issue is time. Time and also, uh, when you use the smaller ones, you can only do less than four inches. When you're using two, three inch gravel, it doesn't pack well. So if you put a culvert in the fall and the spring, there's often like a divot there. You've probably seen that. Sometimes it makes it, it heaves up. And with this, you can do 12 inch lifts so you can actually get a better product at the end. And it, it's three times faster to do it as well. So it's, Less labor and better product. 
Tom, are... can you move the microphone closer to yourself? I'm having a real hard time hearing you. You almost got to split it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is this not something that could be rented? <clears throat> I did not. Jason's out for vacation, so I didn't have the opportunity to talk with him. It can be rented. The frequency of their use changes year to year. Yeah. I mean, right now, everything they're replacing and upsizing, they're going to 24 inches um, just to try to mitigate these heavier rainfalls. And, and it worked. You know, if you look at the last major rainfall we had, we had no FEMA eligible washout. So um, it does, I, I give them a ton of credit. The they, work they've done has really saved our bedrooms. I, I cannot tell you what Jason does. I'm taking to, to like where I live in Peachum. And then, like, telling them the difference of like what Jason learned in the last year and what he's implemented is like saving tens of thousands of dollars. Like, he's between those higher road pitches and deeper ditches and just upsizing that culvert from 18 to 24 inches is just a few hundred dollars, like $200 in the culvert, but it allows twice the amount of water through. So, even though it only allows that water through once in 10 years, it's paid for that culvert. It's 10 times over, yeah. you know, a thousand times over. So, I cannot tell you what he's like. He's very changing important. the face of the Northeast Kingdom right now by what he's doing in Johnson. It's, it's incredible. That's very cool. Like he's, he's really doing a great job. So well, basically, we have two estimates, one for a new one and one for a used one. There's two new two ones. New. One made it in the packet. One was a late submission from Think Equipment. OK, so right. what? Did you give a number on I did. I said 87.95. Sorry. You've got 88.36 and one. Well, 87.95 are new from Think, and there's a used one, which is a rental return from John's Farm and Garden, tells you they can be rented for six thousand dollars. But you also have one from Johnson Hardware Rental for a new one, 88.36. Correct. So you've got three. Yep. They're still awfully expensive. They are, for sure. It is tough to. No, without Jason here, but are we replacing these culverts often enough where we need to have one of our own or is renting one during the time that we need it sufficient? I don't know. Yeah. And you don't know what the rental charge is. It's a good question. I, I imagine when, is when you need it the most, it's probably when every town is trying to rent it. Yeah, it's probably after a storm. Likely. Kevin, can I make a comment? Certainly. So I, I think this is going to replace one which is probably at least at least 10 or 12 years old. I think the one that they've got now was purchased when Steve Smith was still road foreman. So um, and that was a smaller one. Uh, it does smaller lifts. And honestly, if we have a, a crew that is willing to use a plate compactor, to compact the culverts, it, we're way ahead of the game. They used to do it with the backhoe bucket. Um, and, you know, that's just not effective. So I, I would be more than happy to make a motion to purchase the $6,000 used one, um, because I think that's probably won't have to be replaced for another 10 years. And I think that's, I think that's a, a reasonable expense. And it's in his budget. All right. It's not going to grow. We have the budget. funds in the small equipment budget rules. All right. So is that a motion, Duncan? That would be a motion to to approve up to $6,000 for a used machine from Johnson Hardware and Rental. This is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'd like to see another price, to tell you the truth. That was under further discussion. No. Any further, further discussion? Yeah, well. I'd like to see a different price on that. I'd like to see if I could find some a new one cheaper than eight thousand eight hundred dollars. Well, we're only buying the used one. I know, but if you can buy a new one for close to the used one price, you're better off with a, with a new one. I can't believe that you can't get a better deal than eighty-eight thirty-six. So you have a motion and a second. I do. I'm forward. I'm just going to vote against it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Because Duncan's remote, we're doing roll call. That's still in effect. Shane, how do you vote? Aye. Duncan, how do you vote? Aye. 
Mike, how do you roll? Nay. Mark? Aye. All right, and the ayes have it. Okay, the uh, next thing is the Colbert update, which there's a write up on, and Jason is not here today, but they are doing some work down there, and it looks really good. I think they're going to line that ditch with stone tomorrow, and that portion will be done. And I believe the plan is to get a pump truck in there and yep. get it taken care of sooner than later. They did they rented an excavator, it's leaving tomorrow. Uh, Ryan was on it all day today, uh, busting ledge for the new uh, ditch and culvert outside the village gravel. All right, sounds good. Any further questions on that? Eben, for, for the benefit of, of people that may not know what's happening um, and that might be watching this video later, can can we have either yourself or Tom just give a very brief description of what the issue is that they're fixing? Well, they're fixing a culvert that has rotted out that goes from above the village garage, underneath the town garage, um, into a ditch on Lenway Lane. And the culvert was not repairable. So the solution between the foremans was to reroute that water to another culvert closer to the old mill house. Is that a good enough description? That's perfect, thank you. All right. Um, next up, we have Seth Jensen for a couple of topics. One is channel management, and I did a terrible job at explaining the grant. So I really set the stage up for you to knock this one out of the park. If you're gonna do a little bit of presenting because you sit up in front of the microphone, Here. Yeah. We want to take the grant first. Sure. Do the quick synopsis on the grant and the board can decide what they want to do. Sure. So um, the grant that uh, this was something that Tori in our office identified um, just for some background. Um, when LCPC was working with the village of Jeffersonville after um, the 2011 flooding, um, something that we found was really effective were some visual aids of different mitigation projects, um, just to help explain and, uh, you know, people kind of have a picture of what was being, um, considered, um, in general, um, engineering schematics or, you know, acronyms and terminology can be confusing, um, especially, uh, when you throw FEMA in the mix. Um, so we had been discussing in the office that that might be something that would be beneficial for um, for Johnson um, as you're going down the road of thinking about different mitigation options uh, in the town. Um, and Tori identified this grant um, that this, uh, um, the small grant uh, building back smarter um, program, uh, which is a private foundation uh, funding from a, from a um, private foundation um, through the Vermont Natural Resources Council to develop some of those. Um, the deadline would be this month, Friday, August uh, 23rd. Um, there's not a local match required. Um, so there would not be um, a financial commitment from the town. And what we would envision is, you know, as we're working um, with you guys to identify possible mitigation projects, having this in the back pocket for things of where you think having more visuals might help, um, you know, being able to uh, pull that out. Um, so I think all we would need from you guys tonight is, um, you know, your approval to move forward uh, with that. Um, and I'm happy to ask, uh, answer any questions. I might not be able to answer all of them. If there are some that that I can't, I'll go back to the office, talk to Tori, and try to get the information to Tom. Um, but with the turnaround uh, at the end of August, we just wanted to get this in front of you, um, you know, soon. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, the email that you sent out has a 
a photo rendering for these visual aids, and there's no town match. I'm in support of it, but does the rest of the board have questions? Want to get clarity on anything? I agree. I think it'd be great, and it, it can really show us, you know, the ways in which certain mitigation projects will impact us positively, as opposed to just kind of a abstract, you know, idea that we may have. And drawing people's attention to that, what we're doing, mm -hmm. I think is a real positive. Mm -hmm. I guess, unless you have something to say, Duncan, I would entertain a motion. I have a question. What what form would the visual aids take? Is it is it something like a a sign or something you'd put on social media or the website or <clears throat> what is it? What, what what would it be? So you know, um, in Jeffersonville, they were um, JPEGs and PDFs that we just attached to documents. They, they could be printed out, and I think they did print some out in the town office. Um, you know, they were posted on the town website. Um, a lot has changed since we i think that was like 2014 so there might be better formats and more creative ways to distribute them that i think we could definitely talk about um i, I yeah I'm, I'm sure tori will have better ideas than me and than than pdfs and jpegs but that's about my knowledge of of, of that okay Did, thanks since you're not here, um evan's got a picture that says yeah. sends that um it's essentially one of the under uh, under the road walkway areas in Jeffersonville um, with, you know, some people walking under it and the road going over it. So I think it's just, you know, to give people a visual idea of what this particular proposed mitigation project would look like when it was completed. Because um, I think, you know, yeah, there's there's a lot we can say as far as the words, but giving people an image to look at is is very helpful. So out. Seth, would would the motion be to approve or authorize LCP to LCPC to submit a grant application on behalf of the town of Johnson? Yes. Yep. So may. So seconded. Sounds like there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Do you want to um, have a detail about what the grant is you're applying for? Sure. Yeah. Sure. It's the um Building back smarter grant uh, through the Vermont Natural Resource Council with assistance from the Humstone family um, and the Preservation Trust of Vermont. Lots of people involved. That was my motion. <laughs> <laughs> you got all that, Donna? Yeah. That was a lot. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> All those opposed, and the ayes have it. All right, Seth, what do you got for channel management? I believe you've talked with Shane about it a little bit. Yeah, so I, I brought the the agenda item uh, up because I think you know we've all probably heard uh, in the wake of flooding and then flooding again um, that we need to dredge the rivers, right? That's that's something that we hear constantly. Um, I think there are places in Johnson where, you know, dredging channel management, whatever we want to call it, uh, could be very helpful um, at, while being conscious of, you know, going too far with it and making the problem worse in some cases. Um, and so that's why I was hoping that we could have Seth here to kind of get the ball rolling on identifying where those places might be where it could be helpful and getting the next step started on involving the state and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, sounds good. Do you have anything to add to that, Seth? Or... Um, sure. Do you, I can. You know, Shane had asked me to kind of. I I think there had been lots of public discussion and questions about that. That. Um, so I can kind of jump into background and some experience with other communities if that if that makes sense to do to do now. Yeah, a little yeah. information never heard. Okay. Um, so I guess where I start kind of at the high level that, um, I think, um, we, we, I think when we've talked before, we've, um, talked, um, before the pandemic going back really far, I think at the end of 2019, um, 
um, I met with the select board um, and we talked about the modeling work that LCPC had done um, along the main stem um, through the village. Um, at We now have funding through the US EDA along with the um, Regional Planning Commissions and Regional Development Corporations in Franklin Grand Isle and the Northeast Kingdom to extend that um, and update that, that modeling work. Um, part of what that will involve is getting more detailed survey, um, in some cases, potentially channel survey um, of, you know, key, key areas. So where there, it would be great to know kind of where these hot spots of concerns are. Um, I think I've heard kind of near Lendway Road and at the outlet of the Footbrook Bridge um, or the the bridge near Footbrook. I know it's over the, the Lamoille on Route 15 um, near Hogback Road. Um, so in terms of sort of experience, um, you know, when when you see those sediment deposits, there's usually something that's happening. You know, that's usually an area where some dynamic in the river is causing it to collect sediment and then drop it. At that point, um, the river modeling can help understand that. Um, in general, um, ANR, and, and for good reasons, uh, is more open to nuanced discussions about targeted management, um, especially above ordinary high water when in areas where sediment has accumulated recently, than just, um, you know, deep down into the into the river channel. Um, especially in conjunction with you know, projects like a bridge widening or a floodplain restoration that are going to change um, and address the long-term dynamics that are causing that to happen. So that's a long way of saying that, um, you know, in when when you're having these conversations, um, like we had um, back in July about you know potential mitigation projects, um, it's a good chance and time to look at those areas. It's also um, more likely that you'll get support for doing something um, if it's if it's necessary because you're. <clears throat> Dealing with this, the 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 cause, not just the symptom. So, um, the experience in Jeffersonville again um, was similar to that area on you know on 15 and Hogback, where there had been quite a bit of accumulation after the uh, 2011 storms. Um, I, the coordinating with ANR, getting an understanding of what could be done without undermining the surrounding banks um, in the short term and what long-term solutions might be out there to deal with what was causing the deposit made that um, a very different discussion than the just sort of, you know, dig deep, dig now um, discussion. So I think I just spent about 10 minutes going on about how it's very nuanced, <laughs> but, you know, start with um, important to understand the river dynamics and the science, um, and important to engage with ANR early about what will and will not be allowed. And I think there's also just growing awareness on both all sides of these kinds of discussions that um, we don't really have the time to be ideological one way or the other. Um, we need to you know, get into understanding the, the dynamics and the science um, um, simply because the rivers are, I won't say behaving differently, but having very different inputs than, you know, than we, than they used to have. And it, and it adds it some urgency. So if there are, I guess, help me understand where those areas are. Um, and then we can talk about strategies of understanding, like what, what might be good solutions for those areas. Sounds like an engineer's dream for me. Well, I, and the two you identified mm -hmm. were two that I had been thinking about. And I guess my my question for you was, what were the next steps? It sounds like river modeling is one of those next steps. 
engaging ANR as one of those next steps. Um, how do we proceed from here, I guess? Yeah, so um, I think, you know, the the river modeling is something that we, you know, we can make sure gets identified as, as a need. Um, you know, it. I, I think the, the minutes of this meeting can, you know, suffice for that. Um, in terms of the engagement with ANR, I'd suggest reaching out to Chris Brunell, who's the, um, the the river river guy for this area, and you know, trying to organize a site visit. Um, he covers quite a bit of area, so doing you know doing some lead time to get him out here, um, and uh, you know, someone from our office would be happy to join. That I say someone that will probably be me. <laughs> Um, um, and I think there's also, you know, local observations about how those areas have changed since the July, last July storm, the 2023 storm would be really beneficial too, um, because the new, um, that shows a change in the dynamic, right. As opposed to something that's been established for, for quite a long time. Um, so yeah, th I think those, those are the two actions that you would take, um, and I, you know, start, start documenting, um, especially documenting the change, um, and talking to Chris Brunel, um, organizing a site visit, um, and, um, go from there. Um, and as far as the, uh, you know, the projects that we talked about back in July is just having that kind of. Uh, you know, basic list of ideas enough for us to go to a and and say, we want to be doing this in conjunction with these, or do you think we need them more fleshed out before we can? I, I think for the initial discussion, I think that list is, is, um, you know, is, is, is good. I think as you go forward again, kind of, Right now, that list kind of identifies like general problem areas and general things you want to look at. Um, what really helped in Jeffersonville um, for the extent that they ended up doing was um, the fact that they had some pretty clear alternatives spelled out and some pretty clear numbers to those those alternatives. And you know what they had was you know modeling evidence that. A little bit of sediment management would help with the small, you know, what we call the annual storms, um, and that the bigger projects would change the sediment transport such that um, the river would clean itself out better, so that that removal, you know, was kind of it, it advancing the natural process. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly what's going to happen here, but I don't think you need to wait to initiate the discussion until you have that. Um, but having that discussion while the engineering is going forward and at the same time, given the constraints we're under, um, it's a good idea. Sounds like we have a little bit of homework to do, but did you take some notes on that? We could talk, to Seth we could talk about it in our planning meeting. Yeah. I think that would be a better fit, but keep it moving forward. I'd also like to suggest, Evan, that um, LCPC is is uh, graciously hosting some discussions uh, mm -hmm. with regional partners um, with regard to the impacts of flooding on a river shed, a, a watershed basis, or a, a river management thing. And that that's a really good place to have some of these discussions because. Removing a gravel bank in Johnson may well have an impact on Cambridge. Um, so I think we, you know, while it might be good for Johnson, it might be bad for Cambridge. So I think we need to sort of evaluate that in the con in the greater context of a watershed plan. And I will just say quickly, I'm on a VLCT Environmental Policy Committee, and there, we've we've been having discussions and there's a huge amount of interest right now on a more regional mm -hmm. approach to solving some of these problems. Um, so I think I, I think it's great, a great conversation, a great thing to be talking about. But what I, 
I do think we kind of, we need to think beyond municipal borders when we're talking about these issues. Yeah. I agree completely, Duncan. Um, the, the reason I think we need to talk about it is we do have local decision-making authority and in order to get the ball rolling, even if it is part of a regional process, I think we do need to say we want the ball to be rolling. So um, that's why I brought it up, but. Yeah, no, I think it helps the discussion. I think it helps move everything along. So thank you. All right, any further questions for Seth? I have a lot, but I'm gonna pull. Well. <laughs> All right, on the edge of your seat. Thank, thank yeah. you for coming in, Seth. No problem. Thank you, Seth. Yep. Our next item is errors and omissions. I believe that they're both in the packet. Um, our assessor has prepared these and is looking for the select board's approval. What would the select board like to do? Move to approve as submitted. And that's, uh, do you want me to read them out? There's nine. Nine. Well, if it's in the packet, I can take the information there, but how much information do you need to submit? As submitted, it's fine. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Sorry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And the ayes have it. All one sec. There's no signature page. I'll use a signature page for that. You only need one signature page. Okay. All right. Next item up for discussion is the rail trail scoping study. There was some supplemental information in the packet. In your uh, folder. This is this is the write up. Right. Would you like to do a little presentation on that, Tom? So um, the Rail Trail Committee and Randall put together an RFP. It went out to bid and we were doing <laughs> boxes um, from Mumley Engineering, BHB, and Du Bois and King. Oh, John has worked with all three um, in the past. And the Rail Trail Committee selected BHB uh, based on the conditions of the grant um, that not all uh, proposals met the conditions of the grant of a timeline and that the scope, the product, help me out here, but the the proposal um, seemed much more in depth from BHB uh, for the price than the lowest bidder. So I'll look for the record that the recommendation is not the lowest bidder, but the lowest bidder did not meet the requirement of the grant to have a timeline included. At the um, and uh, the perform the proposal was much more in depth from BHB, and that's why the Rail Trail Committee is recommending the BHB for twenty seven thousand seven hundred. How would the board like to proceed? Can I just clarify that the underlying grant authority uh, would would be okay with awarding a bid to not the lowest bidder so long as there was good and sufficient reason not to do that. Tom, I think that's a question. Yes, I believe the reason the Rail Trail Committee did not select the lowest bidder is because the response from them did not meet the conditions of the grant itself. Based, based on that, I would vote to accept the recommendation of the Rail Trail Committee and issue a contract to VH, VHB or VHP? VHB as in boy. Second. All right, there's a motion on the floor and a second. Is there any further discussion? Thank you to the Rail Trail Committee for your work on this. Thank you very much. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All, those, all those opposed, and the ayes have it. That's exciting. Um, 
There was no signature page. Okay. I think you're good. Yeah, I think it's good. Just get that. All right. The next item up is clarity on the emergency spending from the early July flood. Uh, background for anybody that doesn't follow our board meetings successively. There was an emergency meeting on the the 12th or the 11th of July. I think it was on the 11th. Uh, where we did declare a municipal emergency because we had heard upstream the oil, there was a lot of water coming. Um, and the emergency management director was allowed to spend funds um, and the fire department has sent us a bill. Is that in the packet? It's not. Or, I, uh, I don't have a copy of that. Was yeah. that in the orders for the fire department's bill? It wasn't on my calendar, so it must It wasn't on your calendar. It must have been a real emergency. It was it was sent to you, but it might not be in the All right, we're looking for an exact amount here for reimbursement. Uh, $1,822.50. I think I think this is just to get it out there. It, it was spent like legitimately. I don't. It is. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, uh, I do believe so. If there's still anything in it, <laughs> um, I I think, and I, I talked with RJ about this a little bit. Um, come contract time, I would be for getting a conversation going where we could have something in place for this. Um, it's very difficult, you know, fire department's not planning on floods. They're also not planning on structure fires, but there's probably more of a cadence to other portions than major flood events. And I want everybody to be made whole. I just want to plan properly for the taxpayers. So probably this item will come up again. Is there questions about this building? Anything like that? I, I think for the sake of togetherness, not having a discussion whether or not who notifies the residents, but the expectation it's worth it to pay the money in contract time just so that the fire department knows. So they, they expect the duty. So rather than asking permission, will you do this to help us? It's they're coming to the table to help everybody too at the same time. And I think it'll, it'll really help the conversation together to move forward. I mean, I've never said no, but it's just, and to address what uh, Evan's talking about, I don't think the town should pay as it goes because if you ask somebody to build something into a contract, uh, they're going to protect themselves and they're going to give you sometimes a worse deal than you would if you paid as you went. So I think we need to just leave things the way they are with your contract. Do not build it into a because I know that I would, if somebody asked me to build it into a contract, I, I would really make sure I was protected. And so I would go on the high side, not the low side. So we should pay what they bill us. Maybe I misworded that. I, I didn't foresee this as built into the contract. I mean, we have an emergency fund, and it's usually going to be able to cover stuff like this. It would be nice if there was just a sum of money and this wasn't coming out of our budget, but I guess it's really not coming out of our budget anyways because it wasn't an emergency expense. Maybe I overthought it. Um, well, I've just gone by what you had on in your yeah. building into the budget. I, I would not have approved that. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments? I do want to I say... Do. Could I get mine out first? Yeah. I would like to say that the fire department um, does work hard and there was an immense thank you from everybody I ran into for them at this event. And I'm just extending that. What's your comment, Duncan? So my comment is um, I fully appreciate the good work that RJ and the department did on behalf of the entire town. Having said all that, it is a quote, 
village fire department um, in many of the areas that are affected by flooding are wholly within the village. There are certainly some that are not. So I, I guess I just am hoping that we can talk about that at contract time and come up with something that is equitable between the town and the village where the town isn't being asked to foot 100% of the bill for advising village residents of, a, of an emergency. And I, I don't mean to sound that, have that sound as being ungrateful for the work the fire department has done. It's, it's just a reality that, um, you know, that the town contract contributes a considerable amount toward the total fire department budget. Um, which which is a village department. So I think it's a I think it's a reasonable discussion to have with a fire department. How how do we how do we do that in a way that um, you know covers all of the residents? I was just assuming that they would be billing the village. They're only billing us. Correct. Yeah, I, I think you know as as a village resident who is also a town resident. The idea that we're sort of splitting hairs over this is a little frustrating to me because when when it's you know when an emergency is happening, like the town is the one who has to declare that state of emergency, and you know we're the ones who eventually, in those cases, have to engage the fire department to go out and warn people or or whatever we need them to do, and the thought that we're going to be in that moment deciding who pays for what and you know I, I just think that's not the time that we want to be trying to figure those things out the time to figure those things out is contract time um and whether that is you know additional money that has to be paid into the contract or whether there is a more equitable way we can work that out between the town and the village i just think when we are in the middle of a flooding emergency is not the time to be thinking about it or asking questions of you know, are you going to be paying us back for this or not? The fire department did great work and they got out there proactively during this last flood. Um, and, you know, I think I heard the same thing that Mark did. Everybody was appreciative of that. And them knowing that that is just a part of emergency services in this community, I think would be beneficial to everybody, whether they are a village or a town resident or both in my case. Um, so that's my two cents. I think that was the point Duncan was making too, is this is a discussion, a bigger discussion, not in time of emergency. Yeah. I think a major difference is that the town dictates whether or not the fire department has to go out or not, right? And so the emergency management director is a town position and they could hire the road crew with overtime or they could hire the fire department or they could call the sheriff and in this case they chose to do the fire department and i think also in this case the response was overwhelmingly positive to have the fire department go out and notify residents high water is coming and so that's whereas the fire department doesn't make that decision on their own and that's why i, I think the expense is solely the towns because it's hiring is fee for service you know it's you far cheaper to get the fire department to do it than pay the county's lawyers Didn't hear what you said, Mike. I think it's far cheaper to get the fire department to do it than the town employees to do it. We have an excellent fire department, one of the best fire departments in the state. Uh, I don't think we should be splitting hairs at all about this and just pay the bill when it comes in. The next time it comes in, we pay the bill. I don't think it... Anything should be built into any contract whatsoever. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any further discussion? I'm sure we'll talk about this during contract time. Let's to get I think we already authorized you to spend the money, right? So you're just looking yeah. for confirmation? Uh, just making the board aware. Yep. You know, hopefully there's a way that we can just ease the burden on everybody in the future. 
Um, next item, Tom, you have an update on River Road East uh, that was in the packet. Anyways, but is there anything you'd like to add to that? Or could you speak about it a little bit for people that didn't get the packet? Um, I just want to say that a group of volunteers um, met with the resident and um, a nonprofit out of Morrisville um, generously paid for a dumpster. And a group of volunteers, about 30 people, came out and loaded a dumpster and it was taken away. And what's the difference of the property is amazing. Um, I probably could take another one, but these guys did great. And um, I thought, thought it was an excellent way to solve a problem, coming together to help. Right? You know, it's really nice. I met with the resident after it was done, and they were extremely thankful and still going to continue progress. But the bulk of it is, is out of the way. It's great. I'm sure there's a letter of thank you going out to that group, right? Yeah. Was it an organized group? I guess I'm not I, sure where the volunteers. It. it was not town sponsored or sanctioned, or it was just a group that helped a Johnson resident. Um, and it was it was really nice. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, next is an update on a vicious dog. So uh, there was a few emails going around, but it does look like um, the situation that was under control, this is out on St. John Street, um, is now, uh, has escalated again. And it does look like the behavior meets the demand for a vicious dog hearing. Um, I, had, I was not able to touch base with B-Day or Dean today. But I think we need to start that process. I, I've never been part of one, and I don't know what that looks like. But the select board will have to hold a hearing similar to what we did with the dilapidated building. OK. Uh, I think our, our ordinance is fairly clear on <clears throat> what the definition of a potentially <clears throat> vicious dog is and how the process happens. So that specifically says, <clears throat> that there has to be a complaint and that if there's a complaint, the board must act on it within seven days. Do we have something that is sufficient to call it a complaint under the ordinance? There was that email with the video. <clears throat> yeah, that was more than seven days ago. It was. But... I the vicious last vicious dog hearing I was in a while ago, but there was a, a complaint and then a <clears throat> ticket and a warning by the AOC at the time or a, a report. We'll have to brush up on the ordinance, I guess. Well, Article 11 of the of the ordinance specifically says a person claiming a dog is a potentially vicious dog may file a written complaint with the select board. The complaint shall contain the time, date, and place where the alleged behavior occurred, <clears throat> an identification of the, of the animal who threatened or attacked, the name, address of the victim, et cetera, et cetera. And then the board has seven days to investigate and hold a hearing. So if, if we don't have an actual complaint that meets those requirements, then I don't think we, on our own, initiate a vicious dog complaint. You know? You're absolutely right. The question is, is, is that video... And what's in the email? Yeah. And what's in the email an actual complaint? Uh, and I think, I think tomorrow we should act on this quickly. And if it <clears throat> if it does meet the complaint, we have to hold a hearing right away. And if it doesn't, you need to reach out to the landowner to say, here's how you file a, a form. You need to file a formal complaint just to meet the you know the right. bureaucratic process. And we need to hold a hearing right away. So no matter what, tomorrow over email, we should try to schedule that up. <laughs> and I I think, you know, I think the person affected will have no issue making it making it a formal complaint but i think i i think 
that we need to have that done. Uh, I, I've read her email. I've looked at the video. In my opinion, that does not qualify as making a complaint. We need a formal complaint, period, in writing. Yeah. And I would expect that it's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. So this... Okay. Then, then we will act on it yeah. within the seven days. Just so everyone's aware. We, we need to be really careful that we follow exactly our ordinance procedures on this because I can tell you in the past, uh, the town got sued over an issue of a vicious dog complaint. Um, so that's why I'm being, um, that's why I'm being really cautious about this is I just wanna make sure we, uh, we follow all of the necessary procedures to the team. Good information. Good, good to know. Yep. Item number 13, would you like to present on that, Tom? So, uh, BJ Putbane is one of our animal control officers. Uh, he has requested permission from the select board to attend a training on ticketing. <laughs> that he can provide tickets on behalf of the town for uh, or 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 exactly. Tom, can you speak closer to the microphone? Sorry. Uh, BJ has requested uh, training for ticketing for ordinance enforcement. Um, I do not know the cost of it yet. Rosemary, have you remembered from any I'll report back to you. Yeah, so find out what it costs. I don't. Do you want to do a not to exceed or just wait to the next meeting to. to... Next. <laughs> we have an idea of what the site is coming for. Yep. Mark, I can't hear you either. Can you speak closer to the microphone? Yeah. I can't hear him. He's sitting right next to me. <laughs> Both of you guys turn your hearing aids up. Mine are way up. Mine, like... Mine's way up. <laughs> can you hear me now, Duncan? I can. I can hear you Just beautifully. Barely, hey? Okay. <laughs> no, I I just I think we need to wait a meeting. They need to flesh out um what this whole thing is involves. And I personally would like to know what um area he could write tickets in. Which I, I have no idea. Can he write? Yeah. Does that mean he can go out and um, look and see if my dog has the correct license on it and write a ticket? He can. Yeah, he could. Oh. What do you think about that, Groot? Groot Groot's in favor of it. <laughs> yeah, no, BJ is also authorized to enforce the dilapidated buildings ordinance, the solid waste management ordinance is he also a, a health officer i can't remember but but the municipal ordinance uh, i would be entirely in favor and we absolutely should if, if we're asking him to enforce our ordinances he absolutely should be trained and we should foot the cost of whatever the cost is to get I, him I, properly I trained agree Doug. Yeah, there was just to ask for Tom to follow and find out. Are any of those trainings they're gonna write online? Tickets. We want them because they're representing us. They're out there writing tickets. So basically from the select board. And you follow up yeah, and see what the training would cost, and we can deal with it next meeting. All right. And yeah. Duncan, just a a tech thing: if you yeah, yeah, disable your video, um, you, you're you're kind of cutting out a little bit. But if you disable your video, your voice should come through much clearer. Okay. How's that? It's good for now. You're there. <laughs> 
Let's move on to sewer. Yes, Mr. Chair. This is, this is, I believe that Duncan wants to present. Uh, you sent out a pretty good email this weekend. Uh, but would you like to read that or add anything to it for the discussion? Yeah, I won't read it because I don't have it in front of me. But really, you know, for the benefit of anybody that is in the room or might be watching, um, we had a discussion at our last meeting about the existing town sewer service area and how to make that easier for people to hook up into it. Um, I also have been saying for a while now that we need to amend the ordinance to include the portion of the Jewett property, which is in the town, not in the village, um, so that if we are able to be successful with our light industrial park, uh, that people would actually be able to yeah. get a connection there. So there's really two two aspects of it. One would be to add areas to the existing town sewer service area. Um, and the other would be to clarify that any parcel which, a portion of which is within the current town sewer service area, the entire parcel uh, would be eligible for the benefit of connections. And uh, that, that would be my proposal and I'm happy to work on something like that, but I, I don't wanna go to that effort if it's not something the board is interested in pursuing. Duncan, can you hear me all right? I can. I was reading your email and I thought you backtracked on uh, what you just said about if they had a portion of it in the current sewer service area that all of their property could be used. And I thought you said in the email, which I do not have in front of me, I'm going by memory, but didn't you say you didn't support it or you still support it? No, I do support it. What, I, what I'm less supportive of without more study is if a person's property simply abuts the town sewer service area, as opposed to having a portion of it within the town oh, sewer service area. I follow you in that sewer service area. Does it go to that one? Duncan, I think uh, if you're going to amend the ordinance, rather than having a policy and an ordinance, it might be, and if you're gonna have to go through the hearing process, it'd be a great time to get planning commission's policy into the ordinance rather than having it you know, so it's one ordinance all encompassing rather than an ordinance and a policy. I don't like the planning commission's policy, so that would not be my intent. You don't like their policy. What What's the problem with it? There's a lot in their policy that um, I think the way the ordinance is currently written, it authorizes once the once the town authorizes the connection then the village's sewer ordinance goes into effect and that deals with all of the issues related to line extensions, line sizes, et cetera, et cetera. So I think much of what is in the current policy of the, of the draft policy of the planning commission is, isn't appropriate. It, it's simply, um, restating things that may not currently be in the village's ordinance. So that's that's part of the reason I don't like it is I don't think it's I don't think the policy is entirely consistent with the village ordinance with regard to hooking up or making physical connections. And well, I also work in well, concert with the village and get that ironed out. I don't think you need to. If, if we simply amend the ordinance as I described, the the village's ordinance applies. Okay. And it it's you're very saying, clear. So you're saying your two paragraphs you basically had in your email would suffice for two pages of the planning commission's addendum. Uh, I think there are also some things in the planning commission's proposal which I personally would not support with regard to unlimited extensions of the of the existing sewer line. My my opinion is that's my opinion only um, is that that requires further study and thought 
Um, and it would be reckless of us at this point to simply adopt that policy as part of the ordinance. That's okay. my opinion. I think I think this could be a really effective, down and dirty, easy, simple amendment. And then we can study the question further about, you know, whether it should be extended or, you know, other areas added. I mean, Doug Moldy in the past has suggested uh, areas at the top of Clay Hill might be an area that should be included as a town sewer service area. But I, I think those things, I don't think we should do a knee jerk reaction on this. I think we should study it a little bit and give it a little, a little care and thought. Oh yeah. I mean, we've waited this long. We don't need to go uh, half cocked on it. That's for sure. Now, are you going to uh, take the best of the planning commissions and meld it into your thoughts and then come up with something for the board? Uh, I can certainly review the Planning Commission's uh, um, ideas again, but but again, my, my concept is pretty simple. Um, if, if the property goes into, you know, if any portion of the property goes into the town sewer service area, then you could apply the entire lot to the town sewer service area so they could get connections on the entire lot. Mm -hmm. But then you talked about earlier uh, in this conversation about the sewer uh, hookups in the sewer service area, that if it went right by their property line, you wouldn't support that. But in some cases that would be closer than what somebody would want to build further up if you went by uh, just going through the property. If, well, if, you, if you actually look at the map of the current town sewer service area, I think a lot of those things were factored into that initially, Mike. Okay. Um, so that's, that's kind of why I'm you know, thinking along the lines that I'm thinking. And again, if, if, if the majority of the board is not interested in that approach, I, I'll sit back and, and let others, <laughs> you know, propose other things. But um, that's, I, I, I'm certainly willing to do something based on, you know, based on the email that I sent out, based on our discussions tonight. If, if not, that's fine. Um, if there's no interest in it, I don't want to spend the time on it. No, uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I'm certainly interested in it, and I appreciate the work that you did on it, Duncan, and I think you've done a, a great job on it. And if you tighten it up a little bit, I'm sure it's something that I can support. Duncan, this is Paul. Can I jump in? Sure. Um, at the last select board meeting, I thought you had kind of punted this back to the Planning Commission to work with Eric and come back to the board. Is what you're proposing tonight in lieu of that? Are you taking this off our plate? Well, I can't speak for the full board, but I think it would take a lot of the pressure off the Planning Commission if we did something like that. Well, I, for one, would be happy to look at that with you and maybe get the village input and see what we can go back to the board with if you want input. If you're ready for the board to make a decision tonight, that's fine, too. Uh, the only thing I was hoping from the board tonight was was um, an interest in proceeding. I I would, of course, welcome, um, you know, any review, uh, you know, by yourself and the village trustees. Um, at, at the end of the day, I think it's a town ordinance, um, but. Well, that's a good compromise, uh, Duncan, and I think that's great. And uh, the three entities work together on it, come up with a good product. What are your thoughts, Mark? I think um, I would like to hear from Paul and have Paul and Duncan come to a peaceful agreement on this. I mean, we've empowered the planning commission to do this. I don't want to just at the last minute not respect the work they've done. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And I think collaboration between all three entities is necessary for us to come up with something that's actually going to work. So are you comfortable with that, Paul? 
Yes, well, absolutely. You, you mentioned that. That's what he's okay. saying. So, yes, yeah, um, I think the sentiment of the board is to make these amendments, Duncan. Uh, I haven't heard anything otherwise. Yeah, and as I, as I said, and you know, whatever gets put out there will be a discussion draft. So it'll you you guys will all have ample opportunity to weigh in. <clears throat> yep. Well, thank you for offering to head that one off, and uh, I guess we'll wait to see at a future meeting. Thanks for everybody that's uh, helping on this. Yeah. It's it's important. It's a big deal. But we do it better, but it is a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Uh next item is a request for expenditure. I'm trying to read this. Of the rest of the memorial funds for Leia. For Leia. So anything to add to that, Tom? Rosemary. We have a balance of $1,605 from the playground over at Old Park. Can you tell the board where that money is? is it in, it's in the general fund. It's in the general fund. And last week, Eddie brought in another check for $4,100. Wow. And he said he has been in talks with the Realtor Committee in Howard, and he has given them suggestions on where. He would like the money spent and they are going to make recommendations to the select board where they would like that money spent. But one item he specifically wanted was there's a picture of Leia and her kids in the Trail Hill building. Mm -hmm. and he would like that preserved. At the Historic Society or preserved there? Preserved at the, at the Trail Hill building. Okay. <clears throat> His, his, do we have possession of that for you? He brought it in last week. Okay, so it's in the general fund rate at this mm -hmm. moment. So there's 51 something. Yeah. 5700 mm -hmm. something. Um, I mean, certainly I feel like Honor and Leia and Eddie. Um, can you, that's all his ask was that we preserve that picture? Sure. Well, and, and also yeah, the, the and rail. whatever the rail trail committee recommends, they would like to see the money spent on. And just on that, I know the um, rail trail committee is also uh, trying to think of ways to spend the uh, Vermont Community Foundation or Vermont Community Fund is that the one uh, the the money that they had given us as well. So I think they're <clears> trying <throat> to come up with a. They're going to come back with a sort of plan with this. Okay. Yeah. Eben? Yep. I would just like to say that I'm going to recuse myself from any discussion on this subject at all. Okay. Thank you, Duncan. But none of this ever went into like the rec reserve fund. Right? No, it's, no. It's, it's general fund money. Um, how would the board like to handle this? I, I would like to hear back from the rail trail committee. And I certainly feel like honoring the donor's wish of preserving a photo of Oh sure. Twice. Like um is in, I'm gonna make the joke the next time. Is important. What's good? So um say the paragraph. Let's let's try and do let's try and do that wish of preserving the photo and working with the rail trail. Oh, of course. Yeah, uh, so Shane, what are your sentiments on that? I agree and I would also I would also add recreation. Uh, you know, if there is things that they could use some of that funding for, assuming it would be okay with Eddie, um, I think that you know would definitely fit in with all the work that Leia did for this community as well. Yeah. Um, what were you going to say, Tom? Oh, I just thought as a you know like a good faith effort, you guys could. Maybe delegate somebody to head the preservation of the photo, so that gets done right away. And or maybe whether that's the rail trail, a select board member, or myself, just to make sure. Why don't Why don't we just tell you to get it done? I like that answer. <laughs> you know, preserve the photo. Are you peaceful with? It? It sounded like you're peaceful. With oh, of course. It. Okay. 
So it doesn't train your people right. and preserving the photo. Absolutely. The majority of the slide board is just thanks, Mike. Just find out. Yeah. Just as yeah. long as it isn't like preserving an old book in the what do we spend on preserving a book? Oh, yeah. oh there's enough that was funding to preserve it, so preserve it appropriately, however. Yeah. yeah. Let's, and get the rail trail to report back to us on yeah. what they would maybe, like to expense the remaining funds on. Maybe, maybe Tom, there's a way to keep a duplicate of it. There you go. So when it possibly gets stained back up. Okay. I think we're good with that one. That'll be underneath the first thing for camera policy, anyways. Yeah. Uh, there are two bio applications. Tom? So that is uh, the Wallace property. Um, I think it's 297 River Road West. Um, and then the Pedro property is the health center. Um, okay. And so both of those applications, I don't have them, but they were they didn't build out in uh, Learn and Morrisville. And I got the text message today, uh, but with the pending deadline, I just was hoping you could approve them so that I can sign them and get them into the state before waiting to close, so close to the August 30th date. Were these both applications that came in um, as a result of our proactive communication to these property owners? I would say Tatro, yes. I'm not sure about it. Wallace may or may not be, but Tatro definitely. Uh, I would say that property is critical to protecting the village. Uh, it's land on actually both sides of the river. Um, it's below the store and then how would the board like to proceed? It's been our policy to approve them, hasn't it? I don't know if it's a policy. We haven't rejected any. We haven't rejected yeah, I'll make a motion to approve uh, both buyout applications of the, the Tatro property and the Wallace property. Second. All right. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Got one quick question. <clears throat> um, with the Tatro property, is there any proposal to subdivide off the the current health center building, or is it the whole the whole shooting match? I believe at this point it's a whole shooting match. Um, right now, there's not a good mechanism for subdividing, uh, especially with that August <coughs> deadline. Um, and non-emergency management at this time doesn't have a mechanism for uh, the for buying an easement on property. So leaving it in Tatro's name and then having the town easement to do the floodplain restoration. So uh, that's all, right now it's a whole kit and um, The governor did declare uh, or ask for a declaration for the July 10th and 11th, 2024 flood. And if that goes through, uh, there is a possibility for future funding. Um, another round, but at this time, this is, is all we got so august 30th is a is a move quick deadline did that answer your question Duncan? it did thank you i would like um i know that this is these have been fast tracked and we haven't denied any other ones could you let scott know about these properties Absolutely. as well yeah as our floodplain There's... administrator yeah all right uh Motion on the floor and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, all those opposed? And the ayes have it. Uh, we have two executive sessions coming up.